Well, hey guys, welcome back. I know just about every time I do an unboxing, I preface it by saying, I don't usually do unboxings, but, <laughs> and I usually don't do unboxings, but <laughs> uh, this is one that I'm going to make an exception for because this is the very new Nikon Nikkor Lens 800 PF. Um, so first, the first thing we know, and I, I'm going to tell you that I literally just got this and I have not opened this box yet. So it's going to be a legit unboxing. I haven't, I haven't opened it. Um, the first thing I notice, obviously, is that no Bumblebee packaging, right? We don't have the black and yellow Nikon colors on here. Just plain cardboard. So let's get right to it, shall we? All right, so it is a good sized box. Ah, bubble wrap. Good stress relieving material. And All right, so here it is. Uh, I still haven't looked at the lens yet. I'm going to save that for just a minute. So it does come in this uh, in this nice case. And again, paperwork. This is uh, okay. This is interesting. This is probably something for in the case. This is um, you know like you would. You would Velcro this to the inside of the case to hold the lens steady. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. I guess the question that I have without looking in here yet is why wouldn't those have already been in there? But here we go. All right. So we have this lens case. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Got that. Uh, have this clasp here to keep this from open. Even if this were unzipped, it couldn't open because it's clasped shut. So we've got the, uh, the little Nikon yellow holes on our zippers. Zipper works nice, good quality case. And here we go. <laughs> I'll turn it so we can both see it if possible. All right, so I guess we have uh, shipping packaging and then we're going to have storage packaging and transportation packaging, which will be slightly different. So the shipping packaging includes piece of foam and another piece of foam down here around the barrel of the lens. Take that out and we have a strap it looks like. All right and then down in here we have the hood and the cover. And that is everything. Now there's a strap inside the uh, case as well and again we have these that we would put in here and basically they go around this part of the lens when they're in the case just to hold everything steady keep the lens from flopping around. Um, the case is padded and nicely padded but you definitely want that spacer to keep the lens from moving around uh, to protect it. So good case. I'm gonna just zip those up a little bit. Set the case here and remove this other packaging foam and again we do have a strap I presume that's what that is yep so it does come with a strap i probably won't use that strap on the lens i tend to use the peak design system and the lens itself now let's take a look oh yes indeed all right so here it is in all its beautiful glory the new 800 millimeter 6.3 pf lens phase fresnel is what pf stands for and um you'll hear it mispronounced you'll hear people pronounce the s say fresnel that's really not the right pronunciation the name fresnel comes is named after a man who whose name was Fresnel and he invented the type of lens that's used in lighthouses and that technology was 
then transported to the lighting world. People who have done cinema lighting for many, many years will be very familiar with the concept of a Fresnel light or a Fresnel lens in a light because it helps focus. In fact, if you've ever been to any kind of a live show or ever watched one on TV, you see a spotlight, that's usually a Fresnel lens. It, it's a way to intensely focus light um, in a specific way. So that technology is now in this lens, as it was in the 300 and 500 PF lenses for the F-mount. So, nice, nice pretty, pretty front element, nice piece of glass there. Let's see if we've got some rubber, looks like we got a little, little bit of rubber there so we can set it down. We have, of course, the gold ring, and the gold ring means this is top of the line Nikon glass. It is an S-line lens, as the S designates. And two other things to look at here are the lens hood. More foam. Now the lens hood is, uh, you've probably watched other people's videos like I have. Um, goes on a little bit differently. I'm going to try that here in a second. And here is the cover. Sort of a soft pleather. <laughs> Genuine pleather. Um, but uh, that'll be good. It'll save me having to buy one. All right, now let's put the, the hood on. Let's see if I can do it first try. So, should be an index point. So we have the lock unlock lever. Oh, I see, I guess. Uh, how does it go? There we go, if we put it on that way. I've got it. I've got it directly upside down. That's why. All right. Bring it back around. Okay. There we go. Now lock it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It takes a minute <laughs> to figure that out, but once you do then you're good. All right, so there you go. There is the lens with the hood, and that makes it a little more formidable looking, but man, this thing is light, um, surprisingly so. I've heard everybody say how light it is, and of course I've read the specifications, but until you really pick it up and hold it, I don't think you really understand just how light this lens is. So I may uh, go mount the uh, Z9 body onto this thing and just get an idea what that feels like for an overall package because at this moment it is feeling like a very very hand holdable situation okay here's my Z9 with the 500 PF lens on it which is something I use constantly and I also have a cage or a, I also have an L bracket on my camera so there is a little bit extra there but let me swap these, put this one down, and that feels nice. I got to tell you, if I'm so, I'm holding it right by the foot, um, and there there is a nice padding on the top of the foot too. It gives you that little nice feeling handle. Um, no Arca Swiss. I know, i got to keep harping on that. But um, Wow, all the weight is balanced right here on the foot when you have the Z9 on there. It is really nice. And I'm telling you, man, you could... Let me, let me take your picture. Very, very nice. It's got a good balance. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't weigh anything, but it doesn't weigh very much. 
This whole thing is probably 10 pounds, maybe less. I should throw it on a scale, give you a real life weight. But uh, all right, well, I've obviously got some playing to do, and I'm going to try to uh, incorporate into this video, I'm going to try to get out today, do a little bit of shooting with this lens so that I've got some actual stills to show you, you know, the very first right out of the box use and uh, maybe a little bit of video. So hope to include that in this video. And if so, you'll be seeing that now. So I put this little camera down into the rocks, <laughs> sort of tucked away from the wind a little bit. So hopefully the wind will be less in the mic on that camera. Um, so I'm out here day one with the new Nikon 800 millimeter f6.3 PF lens. Uh, very first practical test. I shot a couple shots in my backyard real quick this afternoon and then I got out here. So where I am is uh, I'm on the western shore of the Delaware Bay and we have uh, you know all the usual sea life of course out here but we also have a very um, accessible pair of nesting osprey. Um, there's one of them currently in the nest, and the other one's out and about, and that's usually kind of how they operate. One of them's usually out hunting, while the other one mines the nest. I'm pretty sure they have eggs, uh, but anyway, I'm going to use them as my first test subject for this new lens. And, <laughs> just to make sure I'm really weighted down and encumbered, I'm going to try to also get a little bit of uh, video footage on the Ninja 5 uh, showing it in action from the uh, viewfinder's perspective. So we'll see how we do with that. Meanwhile, I will tell you, um, even with all this extra weight, this thing is just incredibly hand-holdable. Right now, my biggest challenge is the wind. You know, the wind hitting that, that front hood and, uh, you know, it's like trying to hold an empty bucket out into, a, into the wind. I thought about taking the, the hood off, but call me old-fashioned, I'm just paranoid about that. That's, uh, it's not always about keeping the light off the glass. Sometimes it's just good protection. And since this lens is not yet four hours old, <laughs> I want to protect it. All right, I'll check back in with you in a bit. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to try and take some pictures. Maybe shoot a little video, too. Basically, quality. You see the quality, you feel the quality. This is a very nicely made lens. And I can't get over how light it is, how easy to handle it is. I'll have a lot more opinions after I've used it a lot more. Day one... I'm just impressed. You know how it goes. Day one was something. But this is good stuff. All right, now here I am just doing some, uh, you know, attention deficit disorder focus testing, basically. I'm just jumping around at different things. I want to see how fast the autofocus is with this 800. And it is very, very snappy. It is um, about as fast as any other lens I've used, either... Z lens or some of the best F mount like the 500 PF, which is very snappy. Even when you're going to extremes on the uh, focal distance, it snaps to the focus really quick. So it's very impressive. And of course, you know, all the caveats apply, right? You got to have light, contrast, but it does a great job. And here we can see it's grabbing the eyeball, or trying to, there you go, on this small bird that's far away. And if you live where there's seagulls, don't overlook their opportunities for practice. And here you can see it's trying to grab the eye, <laughs> and I'm the problem here, I'm just shaky. Um, trying to handhold at that distance is tough, but here's a still from that sequence. And look how tack sharp that is.
Okay, so I've had uh, I've had some good opportunities. This is what I call a target-rich environment. So a juvenile bald eagle just caught a fish, and I think I got some shots of that. He was pretty far out. He was pretty far out, but this thing does give you a nice reach, and I think if they're sharp, those pictures are croppable enough that, you know, was worthwhile. Um, tracking birds in flight with an 800 is still, you know, something that takes a little bit of practice, and I'm not there yet, so it's, uh, it's an effort for me right now to keep them in frame or to, to even acquire them. You know, uh, I will say that I think handheld works a lot better than a gimbal head on a tripod, um, but we'll see. So out of the corner of my eye, I spotted this juvenile bald eagle flying by, and I was able to grab him while he was fairly close. And then I jumped to 3D tracking, and that's what you see going on here. And it's basically just tracking the body of the bird. And of course, as they often do, he's flying away. And I was just about to get off him and then I saw that landing gear come down and here he went in for a fish and he got his fish so he was every bit of a hundred yards away at this point and I was able to get a few shots in that series they weren't all as sharp as I would like but the best ones actually were pretty tack sharp considering the distance and considering the focus system is really just looking at the entire bird. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. Appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe if you don't already. I hope to be bringing you a lot more, not just product related and gear related stuff, but content that I create with the gear. So stay tuned for more of that. And thanks again.